For most bacterial species, phenotypic testing still forms the mainstay of drug susceptibility testing. However, the advent of WGS-based drug susceptibility prediction for TB has led the NMRS to reevaluate the role of phenotypic testing. In this video, we discuss how the NMRS decides what phenotypic testing to perform and the techniques used to perform it. Phenotypic susceptibility testing for mycobacteria can be performed using several different techniques. Firstly, the organism can be grown on solid media containing varying concentrations of an anti-tuberculous agent. The growth of patient samples is compared to that of a susceptible control strain, with growth at a significantly higher concentration than the control strain indicating drug resistance. Secondly, the organism can be grown in liquid media, utilising the midget system. Patient samples are incubated in the presence and absence of anti-tuberculous agents, with a significantly decreased growth rate in the presence of an agent indicating drug sensitivity, and an unchanged rate indicating drug resistance. Finally, microtiter plates can be used to establish minimum inhibitory concentrations for anti-tuberculous agents, as is performed routinely for many other bacterial species. The NMRS uses a combination of solid and liquid media techniques, though this is currently changing, as we will discuss later. Historically, the NMRS has divided TB drugs into three categories for the purposes of drug susceptibility testing. The first-line agents comprise rifampicin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide and ethambutol. These form the backbone of treatment for the vast majority of TB cases worldwide and in the UK. Until recently, all TB isolates received by the NMRS were tested against these agents. The second-line agents comprise the injectable agents, fluoroquinolones and protheonamide. Testing of these agents has typically been reserved for cases of drug-resistant TB, or when patients have failed to tolerate standard therapy. Finally, testing of the third-line agents lenezolid and PAS has been performed only when resistance to multiple first- and second-line agents has been detected. However, the classification of anti-tuberculous agents has changed several times over the past few years. At the time of recording, the most up-to-date guidance is that published by the WHO in late 2018. This new approach to drug classification, as well as advances in WGS drug susceptibility prediction, have allowed the NMRS to replace the previous hierarchical approach to phenotypic testing with a new, more contemporary algorithm. In late 2018, an updated catalogue of resistance mutations was brought online at the NMRS. This catalogue is based on work published as part of the Cryptic Study, an international effort to establish the genomic basis of resistance for all drugs currently used to treat TB. This initial publication focuses solely on the four first-line drugs, utilising data from over 10,000 TB isolates. Using this updated catalogue, the predictive value of a sensitive result for rifampicin, isoniazid, perizinamide and ethambutol is greater than 98.5%. Additionally, Isoniazid susceptibility was found to be an excellent marker of susceptibility to all four first-line agents, with a predictive value of greater than 97.8%. This means that for first-line drugs, a WGS result of sensitive is correct at least 98.5% of the time. It also means that an isoniazid susceptible isolate will be susceptible to all four drugs at least 97.8% of the time. The high-accuracy NMRS WGS system now allows for a more streamlined approach to phenotypic susceptibility testing. Instead of performing first-line testing on all isolates, with second- and third-line testing reserved for resistant isolates, the NMRS now performs targeted susceptibility testing, utilising a branching algorithm based on WGS results. Many isolates will have no phenotypic testing performed. Some isolates will only have rifampicin testing, whilst others will only have isoniazid testing. All first-line agents will still be tested in certain isolates, and a small proportion of isolates will undergo testing against a full panel of agents. We will now look at some example WGS antibiograms to explain how isolates are triaged into each of these groups. This first isolate is predicted to be sensitive to all four first-line agents. Given the accuracy of these predictions is at least 98.5%, such isolates will have no routine phenotypic susceptibility testing. This is also the case for isolates which are predicted to be sensitive to isoniazid and rifampicin, provided that the other two first-line agents are either predicted as sensitive or are found to have an uncharacterized mutation not present in the resistance catalogue. Despite the presence of such mutations, 
indicated by the phrase no prediction on the report, the likelihood of the isolate being sensitive is still more than 97.8%. Depending on geographic area, between 70 to 85% of isolates will fall into one of these two categories and thus will not undergo any phenotypic testing. In cases such as this, where isoniazid and rifampicin are predicted to be susceptible, but either or both of the other two first-line drugs are either predicted to be resistant or have a poor quality sequence, phenotypic testing will be performed for all four first-line agents. This isolate has an uncharacterized mutation in the RPOB gene, which determines rifampicin resistance. Despite the predictive value of a sensitive isoniazid result, the NMRS will perform phenotypic testing for rifampicin alone in such cases to ensure that the isolate is sensitive. This is also the case if either or both of pyrazinamide and ethambutol also have uncharacterized mutations. However, if either or both of those two agents are predicted as resistant or have a poor quality sequence, phenotypic testing will be performed for all four first-line agents. If rifampicin is predicted to be resistant, phenotypic testing will be performed for the full panel of agents, no matter what predictions have been made for other first-line agents. If isoniazid, pyrazinamide and ethambutol are predicted to be sensitive, but the sequencing data for rifampicin is not definitive, the WGS data will be subjected to a close scientific and clinical review. If the sequencing data is deemed simply to be of poor quality, due, for example, to contamination with DNA from other bacterial species, phenotypic testing will be performed for rifampicin alone. However, if the sequencing data instead suggests the possible presence of both sensitive and resistant strains of TB, phenotypic testing will be performed for a full panel of agents. This will also be performed if any other first-line drug is predicted to be resistant or also has a poor quality sequence. Given the predictive value of isoniazid sensitivity, extra care is taken with isolates that are not predicted to be isoniazid sensitive by WGS. In such cases, if the isolate is predicted to be sensitive to the remaining first-line drugs and to fluoroquinolones, phenotypic testing will be performed for isoniazid only. However, if any of these other agents are predicted to be resistant, a full panel of phenotypic susceptibility testing will be performed. This testing will also be performed should any of these agents have an uncharacterized mutation or if WGS fails to generate a satisfactory sequence for them. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, the NMRS currently uses a combination of solid and liquid media techniques to perform phenotypic drug susceptibility testing. Whilst these will continue to be used for isolates which require single agent testing, the NMRS is introducing microtiter plates for those isolates which require a full panel of phenotypic testing. This will result in a reduced turnaround time, as well as providing information about drug MICs which may be of use in managing more complex cases of drug-resistant TB. A frequent query to the NMRS regards the availability of testing for additional agents. While susceptibility testing for clofazamine, bedaquiline or dolaminid are not currently available routinely at the NMRS, they are available through the cryptic research study. Selected isolates may be eligible for submission to this study following the discussion of the case with NMRS clinicians and on the British Thoracic Society MDR-TV forum. At present, testing for more rarely used agents, such as thiacetazone or the combination of meropenem and clavulanic acid, are not available, as there are currently no accepted techniques or standards for such tests. In summary, Recently published data improving the performance of WGS drug susceptibility predictions have reduced the need for phenotypic testing. The predictive value of a sensitive prediction for the four first-line drugs is now at least 98.5%. As a result, between 70 and 85% of all isolates submitted to the NMRS will no longer undergo routine phenotypic susceptibility testing. Isolates predicted to be resistant to at least one first-line agent will undergo phenotypic susceptibility testing, as will those where WGS data is insufficient to determine resistance. And the number of drugs tested phenotypically will depend on the pattern of WGS susceptibility predictions.